Hey guys, welcome back to Home Built, and this week we are continuing to button up the interior of the Alfa Ferrari. All right, guys, welcome back. And those watching last week will have seen that I actually finished buttoning up all of the engine bay of the Alfa Ferrari. So now this is done. Under here, I don't need to touch this part, I hope, um, moving forward. If you missed it, I'll put a link up above so you can catch up. And as always, please hit that like button and uh, subscribe if you haven't, because it does help the channel out. Um, just a few little points on last week. I mentioned on my radiator that there was a, uh, a top mount that I never actually connected up and um, uh, a couple of you actually went back and actually found it for me. It was episode 62. I didn't fully understand how a radiator overflow worked and I built a secondary radiator uh, overflow tank, but I was basically running two and it was, it was redundant. So I ended up removing the second tank, but never capped off the hole. So I've got a, yeah, a cap on it, it's fine. Uh, but that was what that hole was for. Um, other comments about the, um, the controller for the fans and the water pump. Now, yes, I could have used the ECU to do it, but the thing is, is on this ECU, I've actually used up all of the outputs um, because it's a V8, like often you can use extra injector outputs as extra outputs, but there's only eight injector outputs, there's eight coils, so I've used all of those signals already, and um, with the, uh, the dash gauges and a few of the other things that I've got planned, I probably could have tried to shuffle things around, but it was just easier to just use the standalone controller. That will work fine, that will do its job. The ECU is still gonna get a temperature signal, water temperature signal, but it doesn't need to control that system. That can be done by the controller and that will keep things happy. So that moves you on to today, and um, because everything under here is done, my task is to start doing more bits and pieces for the interior. I need to do pedals and a bunch of other things that still need to be painted before they can go in. So first things first, let's get out a bunch of these little bits and pieces and put a coat of paint on it. So hopefully by the time I need to put them in, they're dry and uh, we can uh, just keep moving forward. So let's do some painting. All right, so my painting is done, it's looking good. I'm quite happy with that. So while that is drying there in the booth, I'm gonna get back over to wiring. And last week you would have seen that I put in the electric water pump and fan controller, which is down here underneath the passenger side of the car. And uh, I have now got to wire it all up so that it will work. Um, it should be relatively, relatively straightforward. It's a pretty uh, simple setup. So uh, I'm gonna do that now and uh, tie it all in. All right, so I have the fan and electric water pump controller all connected up now, and uh, that side is done. So that's another thing I can tick off the list. Next thing, it's uh, had enough time to dry now, so I've got these pedals that are painted and ready to go. So when I put the sound editing into the floor of the car, I never actually cut out the holes for the pedals. So that's what I've got to do now, is uh, cut out the, uh, the area for the pedal. I've got a gasket and everything coming for it, but uh, for now I can actually bolt these in and start getting everything into place where it needs to go. All right, so the lower pedals are bolted in. There's a gasket that I've ordered uh, from Classic Alpha that will come in next week, probably. Uh, they're quite prompt. Now, the accelerator pedal. Now, um, if you're watching in the past, I got this pedal, I think it was from a Toyota RAV4 from memory. Um, and I have to wire that in. I've left the wires here that I have to wire in. And uh, when I got it on the sensor, it had a plug that had been cut off. And that's all I'm left with. Now that is no good to me. You can't easily splice these together. And it's one of the things I've noticed about using junkyard parts for a lot of things is getting 
uh, connectors that work properly. And that's where a bit of research, I spent a little bit of time um, taking the numbers off of the sensor and Googling it and uh, coming up with uh, the part number and ordering a new plug. So I've got here um, a, uh, a brand new plug with all of the pins so I can rewire the connector with brand new pins so it all works and it seamlessly plugs in. It's not some cobbled together mess. Um, so that's a good little tip to uh, take away. I've done the same thing for the vacuum solenoids that uh, I mounted a few weeks ago and um, I ordered them and stupidly didn't order the plugs. And when I just went to wire them up, I'm like, oh, how am I gonna do it? A bit of Googling, I managed to find the, the plugs. I've ordered them and they're coming. So um, keep that in mind if you're ever doing this sort of swap. Pedals are in, so the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put in my windscreen wipers. Now, this is the original windscreen wiper motor, which is all looking pretty crusty and horrible. So the first thing I need to do is make it look a little less crusty and horrible. All right, so the wiper motors are all installed under the cowl and that's all bolted down. I'll wire it up when I start putting in the center console and wiring that all together. So uh, that is basically ready to go. Finally, we can do something fun this episode as opposed to all this sort of, uh, sort of tedious little boring stuff. And that is actually starting to tackle the window in the bonnet. Um, this has been sitting around for a while and I'm really annoyed with myself because uh, oh, I wrecked the PPF on the edge. Uh, it kept bubbling up on the edge while it was just sitting around because I'd never heated the edge. Something I've learned since doing the PPF is that uh, I should really go around with the, um, the heat gun around the edge and it sort of sort of shrinks it up and stabilizes the edge and, and seems to stop it from wanting to peel up and lift up all the time. I'm actually not happy with a lot of the PPF on the car, but uh, it was expensive and I've done it a couple of times and uh, that's gonna just have to do. And I don't know what I'm gonna do about the bonnet because it's a huge piece which again is very expensive and I really stuffed it up. Moving on from the PPF is doing the bonnet window. So now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna flip the bonnet upside down and start making up a cardboard template and see what we can do about uh, making it out of polycarbonate. All right, so I spent a bit of time then uh, making up my template and then cutting out this uh, polycarbonate window to go into the, uh, the, the bonnet here. Uh, I wanna thank Peter, one of the patrons. Thank you very much, Peter, for um, supplying the, uh, the plexiglass for this. Um, it's uh, come in handy, finally. Uh, he actually gave it to me like 18 months ago or something, a long time ago. But uh, yeah, this, is, this is, uh, is exactly what I need. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna, gonna peel off a bit around the edges. I'm trying to protect as much as I can, but I'll peel the edges back and I'm gonna run a be bead of sealant all the way around, like some, some, some good heavy duty automotive sealant um, to seal it all in and, uh, and make sure it all sort of fits in there, weigh it down and then we can leave it in place, let it set up before we uh, do anything else with it. So let's glue it in.
All right, so you can see now that I've used the sealant all the way around the edge of the bonnet window, and uh, I'm using some brake discs to hold it down and put some weight on it so that it actually sits down and it gets a nice seal all the way around. It's sealed um, all the way through, and I peel back the cover uh, just around the edges on the top and the bottom, so I protect it for as long as I can, um, and uh, I can see that I've got a seal the entire way around. And um, Obviously it looks sort of ugly and messy at the moment, but the plan has always been that I will actually mask up this edge on the inside and spray over it in black. That way you hide all the mucky sealant sort of look and, uh, and have a nice neat finish uh, when it's done. But uh, that is gonna do the job very nicely. All right, well, that was another week of boring little things on the car, just buttoning up little bits and pieces all around the place to try and get this thing uh, that little bit closer to running and driving. Um, like I said, I'm still waiting on that, uh, that rear diff, and until that time, I can't get it on the ground, and I can't get the car running until I get it on the ground. So it's, it's all... Uh, sort of waiting on, on little bits and pieces. But we are getting very close to being able to start working on trimming the interior, which I am really looking forward to. I think that's all the time I have this week. So I think that means it's time for Fun Facts with Mr. Jeff. Hey guys, last week we talked about the Ferrari 360 Challenge Stradale, or Street. But Ferrari finally produced a full race version of the road car with the Ferrari 360 Challenge. The Challenge was a completely stripped out race car with a single race seat, a full roll cage and a fire suppression system. All of the comforts such as air conditioning, electric windows, door locks, stereo and even the handbrake were removed to save weight. It had a more aggressive version of the F1 gearbox and much larger brakes. Less than 200 of these cars were produced and Ferrari required the buyers to enter their car in the Ferrari Challenge Race Series. From 2002-2004, Ferrari's Corsa Clienti department produced 20 360 GTs which took Challenge cars and added 20 horsepower to them, enabling them to produce 430 horsepower. And the diet continued. They even stripped down the wiring loom to save 7 kilos. Overall, 91 kilos was saved over the Challenge cars. One of the cars was tuned by Michelotto for the FIA GT Championship and was known as the 360 in GT. This was the fastest version of the 360 ever produced, making 540 horsepower. A lot of golden okay, yes. golden golden retriever, golden retriever molting. Yes. Um, yes. That was another one where it didn't really feel like I got uh, uh, a, a lot of big things done. The wiring stuff is always just not great to film, but it's it's chipping away at it to such an extent that I am actually, um, I think I might actually start completing some of the interior next week, Ooh. as in starting to show you uh, the colors I've chosen and all the rest of it. So uh, hopefully you will join us for that. Um, yeah, it's getting exciting. I'm, I'm actually running down my list and it's getting a lot shorter. How long do you, how long do you reckon until it's on the road? Depends on how long it takes me to trim the interior. Conservatively. Uh, it depends on when I get the diff back and uh, uh, potentially it could be driving within a, a, a month or two, which is scary. Mm. Whether, it, whether it's engineered by then and there's, there's things I'm waiting on in the background, but actually getting it, uh, yeah, we, 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 we're getting closer. It's yep. scaring me. Because <laughs> that means a new project. It does, which I've already been working on in the wings, but uh, you guys won't find out about it until later. So, uh, or should yeah. be revealed. Yeah, it will be revealed. <laughs> yeah. Like, subscribe, let Jeff know what you think. Yep. Patreon, if you want to help him out, of course, see the videos without any ads. And um... <laughs> we'll see you next week for the, uh, for the interior colour reveal. Mm. <laughs> All right, guys. <laughs> see ya. Bye, guys. With only one seat, a full roll cage, and Fire retardant suspension. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it was a fire something. <laughs> Suspression.
Sus suppression. <laughs> Suspression. Well, <laughs> so I'm very, very tired today. Completely stripped out race car with a single race street. <laughs> okay. Full roll cage and fire suppression suspension. System. <laughs> no. <laughs> Scott, with a single race street. Oh my gosh. What's going on here? Okay. The challenge was a completely stripped out race car with a single race street. Oh my. <laughs> with a single race seat, full roll cage, and fire suspension. <laughs> Suppression. Oh, I'm sorry, I know, I'm really, really tired. Yes. <laughs> <laughs>